We're gonna make a truffle pasta today with 100 egg yolks. Yes, you heard me right, 100 egg yolks. Just the thought of separating out all those eggs to get that kind of scares me a little bit. But we are here right now on this channel to do crazy things with food. So why not do that? But in the pasta, I want to buff it up a little bit more. And I actually want to use an ingredient that quite frankly, I don't really like that much, but that goes along really well with truffles. A few mushrooms. Now, wait a second. If you hear the word mushrooms and you immediately hate it, just hear me out for a quick moment. I'm going to use the best of the best when it comes to mushrooms. Truffles, of course, you have to consider the king of all mushrooms. And that's almost a separate category. But there's another mushroom that's extremely, extremely fancy and precious, and that is the morel mushroom. So first, I wanna take you on a little ride and we'll go grab a few. So we are on route to go get some mushrooms. We're doing a 100 egg yolk pasta today. That's crazy, first of all. I wanted to give myself some buffer space. With 100 egg yolks, you're gonna break a couple naturally, right? So I want to make sure that I'm kind of prepared for that, but I did want to go get some nice mushrooms just to really be able to make some, oh, I went the wrong way. I went the wrong way. Look at the GPS. Look at that GPS. But I figured we get some really good mushrooms, truffles. I already have a truffle pate, a truffle tapenade that's extremely good. So we're going to go see what we can find at this marketplace. I don't know what we're going to find to be totally honest, but I really want to look for those super, super fresh mushrooms. I like bringing you with me to go see what we're going to find. So let's see what we can get and we'll head back and make some uh, ridiculous 100 egg yolk pasta. Yeah. All right, so we're on our way to find some chives first because we need something green to put on top of that pasta. All right, we found our chives. A little bit of truffle butter too because we got to coat all the pasta in that truffle butter. And then we just need a few mushrooms. So I'm just going to pick like a nice selection of a, a bunch of different kinds here. The nicest ones we can find. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we were leaving the store, but they have such nice flowers here, and I figure I might as well get some for Isabel, because she always helps me with the dishes, so I'm gonna help her out. Yeah. All right. Many, oh. many. I picked some really good ones. Thank you. We got our food, we got our flowers, and we are back home to make the craziest pasta you've ever seen. Perfect length away from home. And check the temperature. Perfect. Perfect. I'm not sure if you guys can tell, but I get really, really kind of nervous and embarrassed filming around people. I'm not really sure why. It's kind of like the same thing when people come up to me in public, and oftentimes I just get kind of embarrassed because I'm just kind of like a shy, quiet person. But we still try to go into different stores and get some tidbits because oftentimes it's just so much fun talking to the people in there. And I also want you to be able to join in on going and getting all those ingredients that we're using for all these different videos because it's just fun to be able to go and see that behind the scenes aspect of everything. So with that said, we are almost home and we will soon be making some delicious pasta. All right, we're back and just like that, we have a big handful of morels. Now I want to show you one of these beauties up close. As you can see, they're extremely porous and normally you're not going to find these things anywhere. In fact, oftentimes I have my mushroom guy, that's what I call him and he is awesome. Literally go out in the woods and forage for morels and other mushrooms too. Now normally you're only ever going to find these dried in a market unless you get super lucky, but they also happen to be super expensive. In addition to these beautiful morels, we have what are called wood ear mushrooms and the crazy the craziest part is that they literally look exactly like ears. Yeah. Most things when given a certain name don't actually look that much like that exact thing. But I always find it crazy that these mushrooms literally do look exactly like human ears. Perhaps what's cooler is they also have this really unique texture, almost something that reminds me a little bit of kelp, but they are delicious in pasta. This right here is what I'm gonna call my egg palace. Most of you have probably never seen this many eggs, and if you have, okay, congratulations. You're better than all of us. But if you haven't, this is probably around 150 eggs. I didn't count exactly, I just wanted to give myself a little bit of buffer room if I break a few yolks on the way. Because keep in mind, I am about to have to separate all of these eggs into yolks to get our 100 yolk pasta. And then we're basically gonna measure it out with the flour and make this massive fat hunk of dough that's gonna rest in the fridge for a little bit and then give us this beautiful truffle mushroom pasta. But for now, I don't wanna make any puns or anything, but let's get cracking. All right, so they're gonna be timing me right now. See how fast I can go through 100 eggs. To start, I'll say that this is where we're gonna put the yolks. So I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil so that nothing sticks. Because whenever you're separating out egg yolks, you wanna lubricate them just a little bit so they're not sticking together and then breaking. So without further ado, let's get the timer going. Dun, 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 I'm gonna save all these egg whites. Oh my God, I broke the first one. I broke the first one. Horrible, horrible start by me. Okay. Um, I don't know. I broke the second one. Ah, I can't go this fast. I can't go this fast. Keep in mind, I can eat all these eggs that are over here, but it's just sort of more of a, all right. So first egg done. One. Okay. My 
hands are so cold. Can you cut the cameras for a second? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Guys, I'm just kidding. This is water. But let's do a little halftime check-in while I go through these eggs. So, as you can see, I've done 50 of these eggs. And come closer here, I'll show you how crazy this is. Look at this bowl of yolks. This is so soft and jiggly. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's just all yolks. That is 50 egg yolks right there. It is crazy. It's a cool sight. I almost wish I could kind of wiggle my fingers in there and just kind of move around in there, but I don't want to break them. So I want you to see this. I want you to see the action that's going down. What you can do with these over here actually is string them all out at the end, get all those shells out basically. It's a really good kind of hack. And that way you can make a really good omelet scrambled eggs without having to like think about sorting out your shells in a separate bowl. This is a really quick way to separate and strain it all out at the end and make an omelet. So good little tip. Let's keep rolling. Ninety-nine, right here. Egg ninety-nine. Look at this fat, full bowl of eggs. One hundred egg yolks. All right, now that we have those 100 egg yolks all measured out, we're gonna go a little science-y on you for a second. So let's drop this empty bowl, identical to what those egg yolks are in, onto our scale. And I see here that it's 1,030 grams. And I'm then gonna tear the scale to account for that bowl that the egg yolks are in again. Swap out those bowls, and I find that this is 1,800 grams or so. So because we have about 1,800 grams of eggs here, we're gonna use about 3,600 grams of flour, since you wanna typically do about 50% hydration. So I'll swap this out. Now put our original bowl back on and begin to measure out 3,600 grams of flour. If you don't know, that's a lot of flour. And after I have about 1,600 in here and 2,000 grams in here, we've got all the flour we need. To make our pasta, you know I like to use the classic Italian grandma well method. And that essentially means dumping our flour out into the center of our cutting board. But don't forget, we have another bowl. So we'll be dumping all the flour out onto the middle of that cutting board into this massive, massive mound, almost like some sort of anthill, keeping everything nice and even. And then I'll take this very same bowl and push it down right into the middle of the well, slowly rotating to make a nice little shape in the middle to put our egg yolks. And now very, very gently into the middle of our well, well, we put those 100 egg yolks, letting them fall on top of each other just like that. And by the way, look how perfectly all of those fit. Normally, I'd whisk this up with a fork, but this is way too small. So we're gonna ditch the fork and replace it with a whisk. Time to get crazy. That is unreal. Look at that yolk. That's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> so the idea here is that we're gonna whisk this up until all those yolks are nice and fully combined. And when I say we really needed a whisk, I'm not kidding. We really needed a whisk. Egg yolks are extremely fatty and thick. Almost as thick as me, in fact. So it does really require some elbow grease. Once we've whisked all those yolks up, we're then gonna start bringing some flour in from the outside of our massive well. This is when things will get pretty difficult to stir. But because of how much yolk there is here, we have to be really careful not to break the well. So I'm gonna come around the edges with my hands and help guide everything right into the center. As long as you're really focused at this step in the process, it'll be fine. But in this case, I'm making so much pasta that I have this volcano that will essentially explode all over my kitchen if I break the edges. So I have to be really careful here. The more I stir, the thicker it'll get, and then it'll be harder and harder to stir it all together. But eventually, it'll get thick enough that it's not gonna spill everywhere, and I can just combine everything all at once. At this point, scrape off your whisk and prepare to get those hands dirty, because it's been combined enough that it's not gonna run off our table. Now, I'm lifting all of this dough in on top of itself, pressing and pulling and lifting and dropping. My entire cutting board is gonna be full of this beautiful, beautiful pasta dough. But this is probably the most beautiful thing I've ever done on this cutting board. So it makes me really happy. At this point, we're pulling everything together, slowly bringing it closer and closer to that uniform pasta dough that we're looking for. You should see that beautiful yellow color from the egg yolk start to come out. All right, well, I've been eating this for quite a while and I wanted to turn off the video just to give myself a breather. You know, I've been breathing pretty heavily at this point and it's a fat piece of dough. I mean, this is just like, this is the biggest piece of dough you could ever imagine. But the real thing here is that I'm not gonna be able to do all of this right now. If I were to do this on camera, 
we would not have daylight anymore. So what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna hack off a nice beautiful end piece with my bench scraper, set this big part aside, and believe it or not, I have a lot of neighbors in my building here who would love some fresh pasta dough. So once I actually make my video, later tonight I'll go back, roll out the rest of that dough, and hand it out to a few lucky people. For now, I just wanna knead this dough until it's really nice and smooth. And you can see that already, just a few minutes in, we're getting that beautiful elasticity that we're looking for here. Perhaps more importantly, it's also getting that beautiful yellow vibrancy that we want in a nice egg yolk dough. Once we've kneaded this for about eight minutes or so into a beautiful, nice dough, we're gonna plop it down, cover it up with plastic wrap, and rest it in the fridge for about a half an hour until it's had some time to relax. While we're letting that pasta rest, we're gonna wash off our mushrooms. So let's pour our morels and our wood ears into some crisp, cool water. We don't wanna wash these for too long because they get a little bit soggy and oversaturated. But we also really want to rinse them enough that we can get out all that dirt on the morels. Because I'm sure you can tell by just looking at them that tons of dirt can get stuck inside these cavities here. And can you see how murky this water is just from them lightly touching it? I mean, these come straight off the ground in forests. So it's pretty understandable that they'd have a heck of a lot of dirt. Once those morels have been rinsed off a little bit, we're going to cut them right down the middle, getting these beautiful little pieces that will pair perfectly with our pasta dish. If you're so inclined, you can always give them another rinse after you open them up like this but I'm gonna be searing them at super high temperature, so I'm not worried about anything at this point. Just a general rule with mushrooms is that you should be pretty careful with them when it comes to rinsing them thoroughly. Once our mushrooms are all laid out, I'm gonna pick all of them up and get ready to sear them off. Now for cooking our mushrooms, I'm gonna go in with a big spoonful of white truffle butter. The butter itself is also homemade, which you already know is my go-to thing to do. And now, once that's melted down, I'm gonna to toss in all my mushrooms followed immediately by a nice sprinkle of salt. Now we'll let those get nice and cooked through, fully coated in all that beautiful butter and perhaps a little bit crispy here and there. Once those mushrooms are all nice and crispy and cooked, let's set them aside. Now to make our actual beautiful cream sauce, we're gonna go in with a little bit more of that truffle butter. Once that's melted, we're gonna go in with a nice little sprinkle of all-purpose flour, and then mix that up until it's a nice smooth paste, creating what we call a roux. That's R-O-U-X. Essentially what we're doing here is making something that's gonna help us make a thicker sauce that'll stick to our pasta. Once that roux is thickened up a little bit, we're gonna add in a little bit of our half and half, or heavy cream, and we're just gonna stir that around until it begins to thicken just a little bit, which should happen in just a minute or so. Once that begins to thicken up, I'll grate in some fresh Parmesan cheese from the massive 82 pound wheel of Parmigiano Reggiano that I've recently brought in from Italy. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but all my amazing subscribers already know the story behind that video. Definitely go check that one out if you haven't seen it. Once I've grated in enough Parmesan to make it nice and thickened, I'm gonna add some pure minced black truffle to my sauce and mix that up until it's evenly dispersed. The smells coming off of this sauce right now are absolutely incredible. And I can confidently tell you right now that this is gonna make probably one of the best pastas we've ever tasted in this kitchen. But for now, our pasta sauce and our mushrooms are ready to go, so it's time to do that pasta. Once we take that dough out of the fridge, let's unroll it and appreciate how smooth it is. Our next step here after pressing out that dough is gonna be to flour it just a little bit here. Then press it out so that we can push it through our machine. Sometimes it's good to get a rolling pin, but just like rolling out the dough, I like to do it by hand. Once we've shaped this dough into a nice elongated piece, really pressing and stretching it out, we can flour our machine and then begin rolling it through. It's not gonna look very pretty after the first go around, but that's why I like to fold it up and put it through a couple times at first. Eventually, you're gonna start to get this really nice smooth dough. And as long as you continue flouring and lubricating everything, it'll go through smoothly. Once you've gone through the lowest setting on your pasta maker a couple of times, go ahead and change the dial to make it a little bit thinner. Then, place it through again. After you've gone through a number of times, your pasta sheet should be at your desired thickness and you can be ready to cut it and cook it. Once that's all nice and laid out on the cutting board, flour it up just a little bit more. And today we're gonna do something special and cut our pasta by hand. I want those beautiful, luxurious sheets of pasta here. So I'm gonna gently cut nice pieces out of it and then make beautiful thick strips of pasta, just like this. Something about having thick pasta like this when you have beautiful mushrooms, truffles, and other things makes it seem so much more incredible to me. And that's exactly why I wanna make it this way today. Once I've cut a nice selection of beautiful strips from my pasta, which don't have to be the same shapes and sizes, but at least relatively similar, we're ready to go ahead and cook. Before we drop in that pasta, we'll put a bunch of salt to get that water salty like the ocean. Once all that salt's in there, the pasta will actually get seasoned when we go to cook it. So now when the water comes to a boil again, just like we see here, we drop in those beautiful sheets of pasta. 
Give your water a quick twirl to let it spin around and not let any of that pasta stick together. And then we just let this cook for a few moments. When our pasta is almost done and all that starch has rinsed off into the water, I'm gonna take a spoonful or two and drop it right into my truffle sauce to thin it out a little bit and also get some of that pasta water incorporated in our final dish. That is an absolute must when it comes to making pasta. Never waste your pasta water. Now that my pasta has been fully cooked, I'll bring this back and strain it. This last step here doesn't require much. We're really just combining everything. So first we go in with just a splash of olive oil, enough to coat the bottom of our pan. Then we'll go in with those beautiful mushrooms, follow that with our amazing truffle sauce, and last but not least, our pasta. Then we'll gently fold and lift this over itself until it's nice and well combined, making sure that all that pasta is beautifully coated with our sauce and being as delicate as we possibly can to not mess up any of those beautiful strands of pasta. At this point, your pasta is ready to plate. To plate our pasta, I'll twirl it around a little bit and drop it right down in the center of my black plate. That white on black contrast from this pasta on the plate is absolutely gorgeous. Make sure you stack high and tight because when you plate, you don't want everything to be an absolute mess. And don't forget to top it with a few of those beautifully large wood ear mushrooms. Then we're gonna come on with a little bit of that Parmesan cheese, letting that slowly melt over the top of our pasta. And last but not least, we have some edible gold leaf, which quite simply begs to be placed over a dish this good. I think it's safe to say that this right here is worthy of being in a hundred yolk pasta. Okay, we had to bring in Isabel to try the pasta because I feel like you guys always get mad when I'm trying my own food and then just raving about it. So it's really not fair for me to do that anymore. So, Isabel, crazy pasta right here. It's a hundred egg yolk pasta in this. I mean, there's not a hundred egg yolks in that, but it's pretty good. Big bite. Very good. What's it taste like? Pretty creamy. I like the gold. The mushrooms are a little strong, but they're really good. I like it a lot. You and they're kind of strong, but it's really good. You gotta like mushrooms. Can you believe that? <laughs> I feel like you really gotta like mushrooms, but it's good. I like it. Come on. The mushrooms are very strong. The truffle. Oh. It doesn't taste like truffles. It feels like mushrooms, but it's really good. Mm. Maybe I just got a lot of mushroom. Okay. We also got Isabel really nice flowers because she always helps us do so many Aww. dishes. So here's your flowers. Thank you. How do we do? This is even better. Even, even better. better. Oh, they, they smell, smell really they good. smell too much like mushrooms. Stop. <laughs> I like them a lot. In all seriousness, Isabel does help a ton with dishes and around here after we make massive messes every day. So I do want to give her a huge thanks for that. I do want to give it another try because I feel like it's kind of fair for me to give it another shot here. Because I feel like I do want to take a deep dive myself and see what the flavor profiles are like here. Honestly, this is the kind of pasta that if I went to a restaurant and had it, it would be a 10 out of 10. Those pasta sheets are very clearly fresh. They're creamy, they're delicious, they're beautiful, they're soft, they're velvety in your mouth. And all that mushroom is incredible. In fact, I think it just kind of builds on itself. You can have so many different bites out of this one dish right here. And yes, the edible gold on top is a nice little touch, but it tastes like nothing. The real thing I'm concerned about is how much beautiful mushroom flavor is inside this dish. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of mushrooms, but having all that truffle throughout this is incredible. This is a knockout dish and it's incredibly, incredibly good. In the meantime, I hope you love the video. This was a really fun one to make and I have a lot of pasta dough left to hand out to some lucky people today. Please don't forget to like the video, smack that subscribe button and hit the little notifications icon because you don't want to be missing anything. And in the meantime, I will see you soon.